Hello everyone, GMX here, and today we will be looking at the Civilization VI game update for February 2021. This is going to be a free update, uh, comes later in February here, uh, towards the latter part, I think the third week of February. Uh, and it, let's go ahead and watch the video. Trample the weak, hurdle the dead, and crush the gods of those that stand against you, because this is the Barbarian Update video. Nice, uh, Actually, this is the developer video for the free February game update in Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Oh, so it's a free update, so that means anyone who doesn't has not even purchased the uh, Frontier Pass will have access to it. So even if you don't have Gathering Storm or any of those other ones, uh, you still get access to that one. So this will be pretty neat. Sid Meier's Civilization. Nonsense! I shall feast upon your bones! He does this every day. This video is going to discuss the new different. Barbarian Clans game mode, the leader selection pool, Barbarian and some of the balance changes and AI tweaks that will be coming to you for free later this month. Hold on, so did they say, did they say leader selection pool? That's kind of unique, kind of like the, we've had the city state picker, we've had the natural wonder picker, now we can pick pools. I wonder if that's for like random. If you select random on your map generator, if you can, uh, on your game generator, if it'll, like, you can pool what civs you want and which ones you don't. Months. So fill a tankard with the blood of your enemies. Mount up on your fastest horse you, and hold on tight because the barbarians are getting their revenge. And this time, they're bringing war cards. Three of the most exciting things about the new Barbarian Clans game mode are that it's awesome, obviously, cool. it's free, and everybody gets it. Yay. Even if you only have the base game and none of the expansions That's or DLCs, awesome. or if you have it all, you will have access to this new optional game mode that offers a complete reimagining of Civilization VI. I like that they're doing these little updates, uh, free updates for everyone else along with the Frontier Pass. So they're getting chunks and chunks for content for people who bought the DLC. And then they're also getting ones who for people who just own the game. That way everyone is still getting a little bit of something so you don't have to pay for the DLCs to still see improvement throughout the game. It's barbarians. The Barbarian Clans mode was directly inspired by some of the suggestions our scouts found among the thorny grasses of your social media posts. A lot of you have been wanting to see some changes to the standard kill or be killed interactions with Barbarians in Civ 6. We okay, so it looked like there's like a, a, a progress bar on that Barbarian. Let's go back real quick. So... I don't know what that progress bar would mean. It's not like a little... Yeah, I don't know what that would be, but you can still see they have archers and stuff like that. Doesn't look too different from normal. Interactions with barbarians in Civ 6. We agree, there was a lot of untapped potential there. This mode introduces six barbarian clans, allows... Okay, this game mode replaces standard barbarian tribes with a diverse set of clans, each with its own terrain and combat preferences. Additionally, the mode introduces new player actions for peaceful interactions with barbarians that provide increased strategic options. Okay, okay. Uh, I do know that the last couple of updates, a lot of people are going to be complaining about the uh, the aggression of the barbarians. So maybe this was in lieu of this, in lieu of actually dying that, uh, toning that down to actually do this clans mode to help out. So we'll see what clans does. to convert into city states. It gives you all new ways to interact with them. For starters, oh, wow. different clans can be found living on or near different map conditions. You'll find the camps of the Hills clan near hills and the Rover clan near horses resources. To make So I don't know if you guys caught that. They said that the barbarian encampments will be going and converting into city states. Um I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, that's going to be actually pretty interesting, especially with the scenario they have right here. If you have a barbarian encampment this close to your city, do you really want it to be a city-state? Or, or not? And why does this barbarian have an eagle warrior? I wonder if that progress bar is to upgrade to a city-state or not. Okay, let's just watch and see what they have to say. Make combat with barbarians even more interesting. Clans can also claim and build unique units from okay. major civilizations that are not present in that game. Clans accumulate progress every turn toward conversion into a city-state, because sometimes even barbarians want to enjoy the creature comforts of civilization. Okay. Depending on how you interact with clans you encounter, you can either add or subtract 
to their progress towards a life of leisure. Dispersing a clan will wipe it off the face of the map as you're... Okay, so you can disperse it. Okay. Gives you your 10 XP. This is like normal. Used to. However, choosing to raid a clan... You earn 33 gold. Your post will remain intact and lose 10 points to your city-state conversion. Clans will be raided once every 10 turns. Okay. And will not destroy it. Instead, you learn some gold and knock down some of that clan's progress towards city-state conversion. You can stop a clan from attacking your cities by paying a modest protection. Okay. So, spend 76 gold. Your cities will be vented for 13 turns. The clan will gain 8 points towards city-state conversion. You can spend 102 gold. Hire a unique unit. Okay, cool. Uh, does that go away? No, and you can hire every 10 turns. Pretty cool. Fee in the form of a bribe. You can also hire a clan and add its strongest unit to your army. Exchanging coin in these civilized encounters will boost the clan's progress towards conversion. Nice. Or spend your gold to incite them and pay them to attack someone else. Well, that's pretty good. So Okay, so they are actually making them attack another city-state. Interesting. Uh... Yeah, so it attacks the next cl uh, ones that the Barbarian encampment knows about, maybe? I'm not sure about that. But that's a hefty price, too. Uh, almost 200 gold. But I think that would be worth it, especially for a lot of people in the early game now, how much they've complained about that. Kind of turn the tides on that. Um, and then can be incited. The, the clan will lose five, five points to the city-state conversion, though. So that's kind of weird. Uh, you paying them gold, but you lose points to our city-state conversion. Interesting. Maybe it's just because you're paying them to be barbarians. Uh, and that makes sense, kind of. While you deny all culpability, lest you start getting too comfortable around your barbarous allies and they abduct one of your civilian units, you also have the option to pay a ransom in order to get that unit back if a combat rescue isn't in the cards. Interesting. So the one for the unique unit changes to one they've captured. If you uh, get a uh, unit captured, that's that's interesting. This note that now, if you have the opportunity or the scenario where they have captured a unit, but you want to buy a warrior or an eagle warrior in this scenario, you'd actually have to spend that twice to get that. So if the first would be to um, buy your unit back, and the second would be to get the eagle warrior. I wonder if that's going to be the ca always the case. Overall, the Barbarian Clans mode will offer even more strategic possibilities as you make your way through the game. You can still treat Barbarians like the empty-headed gold pinatas you're used to, Ooh, you can. or you can try a more nuanced approach, learn to uh, live together, and maybe, eventually, become their suzerain. Okay, so I wonder if this is going to pair with the city-state picker. Like, one's... Like, is there a default amount of city-states that's already on the game, on the map? And then... Um, they can you can add more in the city state picker and that'll be ones that it picks from or if it's completely random i wonder if there's a certain clans that's associated with certain uh certain city states or certain types of city states that is so that that's going to be interesting to see how they do that the free february game update also introduces another new feature that we've seen one or two requests for Ever since we launched the Natural Wonder Picker and then the City State Picker, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of conversation about good. a similar picker, but for opposing civilizations. Okay. We have answered your calls and are proud to introduce the Leader Selection Pool. That's right, you will now be able to customize the pool of leaders that can be used in a game. If you find Trajan to be too big of a bully, you can eliminate him from your selection pool, and he will be guaranteed not to appear in your game. Similarly, if there's a leader you've never played against and want to see how you measure up, you can make sure they're one of the only leaders available, guaranteeing them a spot on your map. The leaders I don't know if you guys saw that. Let's go back a couple. How you can also select leaders with no wins, meaning that if you have a leader you haven't won with before, you can all go ahead and uh, click that, and it'll. Ran if you do random games, you can actually go ahead and uh, randomly be chosen for a city, you, a civilization you have not won with, which is actually pretty neat. I like doing that a lot, uh, so that'll actually make my random rolls um, a lot easier because I can then pool it, so I'm only playing the civilizations I haven't played before. How you measure up? You can make sure they're one of the only leaders available, guaranteeing them a spot on your map. The leader selection pool can even be used in multiplayer mode to restrict the leaders other players can choose. 
that'll be really good for um, like the CPL and everything like that because that'll um, allow people to uh, with the bans and everything. I don't think it's too much of an issue in the actual league stuff, but in uh, in common play, in common random matchmaking, and playing with your friends, you can limit. If you have some friends that are newer, you can uh, limit the super overpowered civs so that people have more experience. And then everyone else can have the ability to play like Pool 2, which has uh, ba more uh, more basic uh, leaders or something like that. That's, that's actually a good balance change. Also included in the free February game update are some additional tweaks to the AI. For inspiration here, we not only looked to your comments on social media, but also looked up into the sky. The bulk of our AI changes involve air units and air combat. AI opponents will now be much more likely to utilize anti-air defenses, as well as much more likely to launch airstrikes of their own. Nice. This should add another level of late game challenge to anyone who's looking for it and prevent the AI from being completely bombarded. Yeah, I've noticed this in my games is that lately, like towards the end game of science or anything like that, they don't tend to have bombers or anti-air, and you could just steamroll with bombers or anything like that. I think that's pretty prevalent in a lot of late game science or late game domination games that you can see that happening. So this will give a good balance change for the AI to actually prioritize that stuff to actually fight back a little bit more. We've also made a few balance changes. While some of these affect only rise and fall or gathering storm expansion content, most of the changes are for all rule sets. For example, we've shifted around some policy slots available to certain governments to more accurately reflect the way those governments would run in reality, and to better align the playstyles you might anticipate when you select them. We've also rebalanced some natural wonders and made some text clarifications in natural wonder descriptions. As an example, we've added a campus adjacency bonus to the Great Barrier Reef. That makes sense. As a nod to the invaluable marine biology research performed there in real life. Another wonder whose changes some of you might be interested in? The Cliffs of Dover. Hmm. The Cliffs will now provide Ooh. three gold, three culture, and two food. One more slightly about upgraded. The Let's Dover, go. And I will cut out your tongue with my dullest blade. <laughs> so there it is, folks. All the important beats from our free February game update, headlined by the optional new game mode Barbarian Clans and the leader selection pool to customize the sieves that can appear in your game. Expect the update on February 26th, and don't forget to tune back in when we hit April to learn about the final free game update of the season. Civ fans, you are the best fans in gaming. Yeah, we Thank are. Thank you all for watching, and we hope you enjoy taking one more turn. Or depending on how many barbarian clans you intend to raid, one more burn. <laughs> oh, gosh. So that was the update. Uh, so February 25th, 2021, like you see on the screen there. That'll be very, very cool to see. I'm interested to see what the government changes are going to be. Uh, I actually have no clue what those are going to be, um, but some of them I hope are going to be uh, good little balance changes. Uh, it seems like some of it's just for historics, uh, but some balance changes would be nice too. Uh, and then the the natural wonders, I wonder if they're going to do any one else, uh, like the Eye of the Sahara is one that I think uh, is kind of kind of lackluster anything that you would think is a d d c or d tier i hope they maybe do a, something a little bit more with those but anyways that's our first look at the february 2021 update uh, let me know down in the comments below what you guys are most excited for also be sure to like and subscribe as i will be playing the february 21 uh, 2021 update as soon as it comes out and it'll be a really really fun time um and hopefully we will have some fun with that barbarian mode it looks like carl had a lot of fun in there well with that said i'm gonna let you guys go you guys have a great one and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye